Now, welcome everyone. Just as it's my turn to speak, we have some sirens going on in the background. Um, we have media that will be listening. Any questions from the media, we're going to ask them to please send them email to feedback at cornwall.ca and who you would like to your question and who you would like to answer your question. And then at the end of all of the commentary, I will, uh, I will read out those questions and help get them answered. So moving along, I would like to thank everyone for joining us uh, this afternoon. And I would first like to introduce uh, Mark Gerritsen, MP for Kingston and the Islands, who's gonna speak on behalf of the Honorable Catherine McKenna, the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, and deliver some remarks on behalf of the Government of Canada. Well, thank you very much. And uh, it's great to see everybody. Um, and uh, um, to be here with you today on behalf of the Minister uh, in this uh, announcement, I will say that we're all getting used to Zoom and uh, are interacting in this, uh, uh, 2020 way. Um, it certainly uh, doesn't have the same effect as being in person with everybody, but it is nice to see everybody if, uh, if only virtually um, for this uh, very important uh, announcement. Um, I will also say that, uh, you know, being from a neighboring riding, I, I do have the opportunity to work quite a bit uh, with uh, MP Barrett. And, uh, um, uh, you know, although we may, may, may be a different political stripe. It's uh, very obvious to me how passionate he is about um, the communities uh, that uh, he represents and that are represented here today. Um, and uh, I want to make sure that uh, he, uh, you know, receives uh, a, a warm welcome for that too, because uh, he does uh, incredible work on behalf of the communities. And to our um, uh, mayors uh, that are here today and our minister and MPP, um, uh, it's great uh, uh, to be with you to make uh, this important announcement. Um, as uh, you know, it's been uh, uh, difficult for all uh, orders of government to focus on health and the well-being of our citizens as we deal with this pandemic. Um, we also know that things are evolving and today's announcement is a sign of that evolution. Uh, that's why I'm pleased to be here with the province uh, and municipalities to announce the su support for the five uh, public transit projects in Cornwall and one in the city of Brockville. The Government of Canada is investing over $5.1 million in these projects. Uh, these projects will improve transportation services and accessibility throughout the cities of Brockville and Cornwall. Um, they will also create immediate and long-term jobs to promote economic growth at a time when our country and our province, uh, quite frankly, needs it. Uh, our government is working closely with provinces, municipalities, partners, and stakeholders to get projects built quickly, projects that make a positive difference in the lives of Canadians in these trying times. Uh, throughout our historic Investing in Canada plan, we are delivering on our promise to build sustainable, resilient communities. Uh, here in Ontario, we have invested over $7.5 billion through our infrastructure plan towards more than 2,400 projects across the region. Projects that are strengthening the communities where you live, raise your families and work. Uh, our health and safety remain a top priority, but we know that strong investments in infrastructure will help keep jobs and stabilize our economy. Today's announcement is part of a series uh, of important announcements that will be made across the province over the coming weeks. Uh, so stay tuned uh, as, uh, as we uh, look towards uh, um, those other ones that will be coming forward. But it is a pleasure to be here um, to announce that uh, $5.1 uh, million uh, for today. So I think my notes say it's, uh, it's up to me to uh, ask uh, um, uh, to turn it over to our minister. Uh, my note said to introduce the minister. So, Minister Clark, uh, or will you be uh, uh, making some uh, can, remarks now? Yeah, I can jump in. Um, um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, as the uh, MPP for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes, uh, and also on behalf of uh, my colleague and friend, uh, the Honorable Laurie Scott, uh, Minister of Infrastructure, it's uh, it's an honor to uh, that uh, that MPP McDonnell has allowed me to. Uh, to, to be here with him uh, on this uh, great announcement. Uh, I want to thank uh, MP Gerritsen uh, and also uh, my colleague uh, MPP McDonnell, who also serves as my parliamentary assistant uh, for municipal affairs. I want to welcome uh, the two mayors, uh, Mayor Baker uh, and uh, Mayor Clement. Um, uh, good to see you again. 
and also to uh, CAO Adams, uh, thanks for uh, all the work that you do and all the work that uh, all the frontline uh, municipal workers have done throughout the pandemic. But I want to first uh, say to Mayor Baker that this is a lot more comfortable, even though it's a Zoom call, than when we were in Brockville last July to make the provincial portion of this uh, original announcement. It was a, a really, really hot day and we positioned ourselves to make the announcement inside uh, one of the Brockville transit buses. So it was, uh, it was uh, pretty hot. So I'm, I'm nice and comfortable today. Uh, but I was proud last July to announce uh, our government's, uh, our provincial government's portion uh, of the project under uh, the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, or ICIP. Uh, we're providing, as uh, I think some of you know, $262,535 as our part of this critical project. And I, I want to, again, as I've done many, many times uh, since the, the pandemic and also before, I want to uh, thank the federal government for today's announcement. Uh, the Brockville portion is $787,686. So that's, you know, uh, going to get the wheels moving on these, uh, on these new transit buses uh, in the city. It's, it's really tremendous news. The, the five aging uh, conventional transit buses will now provide uh, his worship, uh, the mayor and the council and the community with a modern fleet that I think will be much more comfortable and reliable than uh, the existing bus fleet. Uh, I, I think it's exciting that uh, the new buses have uh, a number of improvements, including the automated stop announcements, which I think is going to improve uh, things on an accessibility basis. Uh, obviously my friend, Minister Raymond Cho, the Minister of Seniors and Accessibility, always likes me to throw in uh, when a municipality includes uh, an accessibility improvement because that's so very important to our population. I think by the time the, the buses get rolling on the streets of the city, I'm confident that uh, more people are going to choose this as a viable option to get around Brockville to get to work, to get to shopping or get to appointments. I think. Uh, with the, this this service improvement, we will see uh, people. At least I will predict that we will see an increased ridership as as part of it. And and you know, um, um, MP Garrison talked about the contribution. You know, I think the the fact that the province is investing over seven point three billion dollars in transit infrastructure over the ten years through ICIP is a is a very important aspect because a lot of the times what will get highlighted are the improvements in the GTHA. And I think the improvements that are in communities like Brockville and Cornwall are just as important. In fact, I think in some cases, one can argue that they're more important because of the size of the communities that they serve. Um, I know uh, from a perspective of, uh, as somebody who served at the municipal level, both as a mayor and as a CAO, I know that, that when you replace an aging fleet, especially, it's very expensive. So I'm glad that we're showing that here's an opportunity for both the federal and provincial uh, level of government to, to work together collaboratively to provide dollars. In this case, with ICIP, it's, uh, it's up to $30 billion in cost shared funding of projects that are like the ones you're announcing today. And we look forward to working with our federal partners on other projects that are getting, getting nominated. One of the things I've found uh, since I've been minister is when we announce uh, projects that are in ICIP, uh, people remind me that there's a whole bunch of other projects that are, are submitted to either the province or the federal government. And while they always like uh, these announcements, they, they always want more of them. So I, as, as the province moves uh, and, and opens more during uh, the next steps of, uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic, I think shovel-ready projects like we're seeing uh, today and infrastructure projects like are being proposed to both of our levels of government from our municipal partners, it's really important that we act quickly. So thank you to the federal government. Thank you to uh, uh, Ontario's municipalities. And I am just so very appreciative that, uh, that I'm a part of this on behalf of uh, both my friend, uh, MPP McDonnell and, and Minister Scott. So I'll let uh, Mayor Clement or, uh, or CAO Adams give the glowing introduction for their, uh, their MPP because he hears me praise him all the time in the legislature. So I don't want his head to get too big. Thank you, Minister Clark. We appreciate your comments. And I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Jim McDonnell, our Member of Parliament for the uh, Stormont, Dundas and Glengarry area. Um, uh, 
MP McDonnell, take it away. I guess I am muted now. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, it was all, it's always great to join uh, Minister Clark um, for great announcements like this and, and, uh, and um, look forward to, on behalf of Ontario's Minister of Infrastructure, Lori Scott, and the government of Ontario to be part of this today. And uh, it was um, a little nicer day in, in Cornwall last July, I think it was. And, uh, it was overcast, so it wasn't quite as hot, but uh, they let me on the bus, but they wouldn't let me in the, you know, to drive it. So I guess they were worried I might just take off with it. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, you know, it's it's, um, it's great that we're working with the uh, with the federal government and the city of Cornwall get these uh, projects uh, going. You know, uh, there's a there's always a need for them, and today we're celebrating you know the projects of that will renew and enhance Cornwall transit and improve the quality of life for residents of Cornwall. The five projects include the installation of electronic fare boxes, the replacement of surveillance cameras on the bus adding new and accessible enhanced bus shelters, a new passenger counter, and most significantly, the replacement of conventional and paratransit uh, buses, totaling almost $12 million, from which our government will contribute nearly $4 million to it, to the, towards the project. These investments will help increase capacity and reliability while improving accessibility for passengers who require specialized care. As the MP that represents the city of Cornwall, I know this funding will help make life easier, getting people to where they want to go when they want to get there. And I'm proud to be part of our government that has made a commitment to invest more than $7.3 billion in transit and infrastructure over 10 years through the Investing of Canada Infrastructure Program. Um, we can all agree that moving goods to markets and to people, to jobs, is a critical piece of our community's economic growth and recovery, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm thrilled that the city of Cornwall has been given the green light to move forward by building more public transit infrastructure. And there's really nothing to the message that Minister Clark thought he wouldn't come on today because we were ahead of, ahead of the money on this project. So he's uh, very happy to be here. Uh, we are connecting with people to places and jobs where, to where they work, to medical appointment, to classes at school and back home to their families all on time. This announcement, announcement today could not have been possible without the partnership and collaboration of all three levels of government. And I'd like to thank the, our municipal partners, the Mayor of Cornwall, who's always been uh, great to work with and has been very um, you know, uh, um, hit by this pandemic and, and uh, rolling with the punches as we move through, uh, right from the uh, early on with the, uh, our visitors that came to town. So, um, and you know, our federal counterparts are joining us today in funding these five priority transit projects. So I look forward to making more announcements like this one today and for our community very soon. And as Mr. Clark says, uh, we always hear the question, what's next? So um, stay tuned and we'll see what is next because uh, it's uh, so far been a great partnership and uh, the last four months have been a little bit rocky, but uh, as we move out of this, hopefully we'll get back to normal very soon. So thank you. Thank you, MPP McDonnell. And now I'd like to invite Mayor Jason Baker to say a few words. Thank you very much. Uh, I will try and keep my remarks brief as I often do, but uh, mainly so the three gentlemen in, in the screenshot will wanna come to more of these announcements and hand us more money. So if, if I'm quick, maybe we can encourage more of them. Uh, I'd like to follow up uh, by the, the previous speakers and thanking um, both our senior levels of government for working together uh, and getting this much needed uh, money uh, into the hands of those of us who are going to put it to good use. And I assure you, we will certainly put it to good use. Uh, Barockville's got a very small transit system. And uh, this amount of money um, allows us to um, not focus so much on the capital costs of the system and now we can focus on growing the system from a ridership promotion basis uh, and uh, that's not a small feat uh, for a community our size and uh, uh, you know it's nice to be part of an announcement that really has nothing to do with covid uh, it, it's a, a sign that perhaps we're we're starting to to really uh, kick start the economy and move uh, beyond this uh, pandemic uh, we've made good use of federal tax uh, money in the past with the federal gas tax 
in uh, doing bus replacements on a scheduled basis. This allows us to expedite that. Uh, our buses are going to be more accessible uh, and uh, more environmentally friendly uh, as we move forward. And I, I think it's fair to say uh, there may be some accessories on this new uh, round of buses that we never imagined three months ago. Uh, including, uh, you know, some plastic barriers and some safety features for, for things beyond uh, mobile transportation. So, again, on behalf of the riders uh, of our uh, transit system and all the citizens of the City of Brockville, thank you very much to the federal government, the provincial government, for working together to get this infrastructure money rolling. Uh, we do hope this is the first of many announcements. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Baker. And now I'd like to uh, invite Mayor Bernadette Clement to speak as well. Good afternoon, colleagues. It's very good to see you, even through this uh, Zoom platform. I just want to tell you, um, I'm going to get to the thank yous in a minute, but I want to tell you about Cornwall Transit. It, it really is a most beloved service uh, in the city of Cornwall. We know that, we knew that, and it became even more apparent during COVID. Um, people continue to use it. We have a, a business park uh, which has huge distribution centers and it was important for um, our transit uh, service, our transit drivers to get people to work because those places remained essential during, it, during the, um, the height of the pandemic and we came to see our transit drivers as being at the forefront, being pretty courageous and being the first ones to pivot in continuing to provide uh, services. Cornwall Transit really does uh, connect people to work and to business. And I think it's important for even those of us who don't necessarily use transit, right? Because a community benefits when a maximum number of people can contribute to their community to the best of their ability. And I always find that Cornwall Transit is at the center of that participation in community. So we uh, particularly welcome investment in a service that is so crucial to community development. Um, Cornwall Transit also has terrific partnerships in our community. They partner with the library, they partner with environmental groups. Uh, they're at the forefront of projects that deal with climate change. So our Cornwall Transit is um, just really at the center of our community. And uh, these investments are, um, are particularly wonderful from that perspective. There is a big uh, accessibility component. So Minister Clark, you can take that back to your colleagues. Um, there's a modernization of our fleet, um, but there's also accessibility built into the new bus shelters that we're gonna have. So that boarding from a bus shelter into uh, a transit bus is going to be that much easier because of these investments. So there's a big accessibility piece here too. Um, J'aimerais remercier les deux niveaux de gouvernement euh, qui euh, nous offrent ces investissements. C'est toujours bien de faire des partenariats entre les trois niveaux de gouvernement. So we really enjoy successful partnerships, uh, municipal, provincial, federal. Uh, those are the best kind. Those are the best kind of partnerships. So uh, we're very grateful. Thank you to um, our MPP. Um, who, yes, I was on that bus with you, wasn't I? I think, I think they didn't want either one of us to drive away in that bus. Um, but we're always grateful um, for uh, your leadership here. And uh, please, MP Gerritsen, please take back uh, greetings to uh, Minister McKenna um, and let her know how um, grateful we are and how well we're going to be using those funds as well. Minister Clark, it's always good to see you. Always good to see you. Thank you. Back to Madam CAO, Madam MC. Uh, thank you. So we do have a couple of questions from the media. So I'm going to read the first question. It's for Mara Clément, and you did speak to a little bit, but I'm still going to read the question. Um, why is it important to invest in public transportation? Wow. I mean, yeah. It's to me, it starts always with community participation. Um, we have more people participating either um, by shopping, by getting to, to work, uh, by getting to community events, uh, by you know, getting to family. So it's all about community participation. We also want to increase ridership. So part of these investments are about counting the people that get on the bus 
And the more that we have information about data, the more we can make sure that our service is responding to community needs and also work towards increasing ridership, right? And increasing ridership also means that there is going to be help for the environment there, right? Um, we are very fortunate as a city to have this kind of uh, transit. It makes us a really a real city. I, I think Mayor Baker can can agree that when you have transit, you're not you're not a town. You're a city. Um, so we're very proud of that. But it also leads to um, a lot of impact in terms of climate change. So there's all kinds of reasons for transit, and and it's just transit is at the intersection of so much good community development. Thank you, Mayor Clement. Um, our second question is also for you, Mayor Clement. Will this funding be part of uh, Sunday bus service that is currently being considered by council? Right. So just for uh, all of the other colleagues on Zoom meeting, Sunday bus service is not currently available in Cornwall, but it continues to be um, a real want. The community uh, wants this. We are regularly petitioned by residents uh, to increase and or provide some service on Sundays. And we always have to, unfortunately, um, and I'm just saying this so that MP Gerritsen and Minister Clark can hear, financially, it's, it's very difficult for us to offer that service on a Sunday, um, despite the community really needing it. So um, the petition, we just had a council meeting, we just had a recent petition yet again for this service. And we're going to be discussing this again at budget time. It's tough in this COVID year because um, transit has lost revenue. We weren't able to charge uh, in the way that we were for safety reasons. So we have to be looking at budget as to what we can do. Um, and we may want to focus on paratransit uh, first to see if that's uh, maybe a place to start for Sunday service. But it's, it really is, um, there's a financial barrier for us in terms of that. Thank you, Mayor Clement. Our third question is for MP Gerritsen. Uh, you had indicated that jobs would be created immediately. And the question is, how many jobs are expected to be created in Cornwall? I think that uh, um, perhaps the mayor could answer that question better um, um, than I could, than I could. Um, but um, uh, at the end of the day, you know, from the federal government's perspective, this is about um, getting to work with the province uh, uh, as quickly as possible to get infrastructure money, whether through transit or various different uh, road projects, um, to get money on the ground and moving so that we can ensure that uh, you know jobs are secured during this uh, difficult time that we're going through and that we see creation uh, of more jobs uh, uh, on the other end of it as we're coming out of it as we come out of this uh, COVID-19 experience um, you know our economy has taken a beating um, and it's going to be up to levels of government to come together in particular when, when it relates to the economy the province and the federal government to come together to help boost the economy and to make sure that we come out of this um, aggressively so that we can get back to where we were um, uh, at the beginning of this year. So, um, you know, uh, I guess uh, my comments uh, specifically, and I'll, I'd like to hear one of the, one, I'd like to hear the mayor answer on, on the number of, of jobs, but I think, you know, um, more holistically, this is about making sure that um, we can, uh, you know, continue to uh, grow the economy um, as we're coming out of this. And, and that's why I know the province and the federal government are very much interested in spending on infrastructure projects now uh, so that we can ensure that that happens. But um, um, your worship, did you want to add uh, to the number of jobs? Uh, no, well, I can't be very specific at that point. And I may, I may actually kick it to our CAO, Ms. Adams, who's uh, in addition to being the MC, also the CAO for the city of Cornwall. But I agree with you. It's more about, it's also about job security too, right? And maintaining and safeguarding what we already have. Um, but in terms of what, in terms of a specific number of increased jobs. I don't know if Ms. Adams can add to that. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. We don't have that uh, number handy. Uh, certainly the investment is gonna allow opportunities for contractors and bidding to contribute to these types of projects. So I think good for the economy overall, but I don't believe that we have an indication for jobs at this time. I have uh, one question, one more question um, from the Seaway uh, News, and they're asking what the total number of buses will be in the uh, Cornwall Transit fleet. And so I'm going to direct that to Madam Mayor. I'm not sure if you have that uh, number in your uh, 
Let me check and see. I don't know if the MPP also might have that. So there's, um, from what I have here, the replacement of 12 conventional transit buses and eight specialized paratransit buses from 2020 to 2027 inclusive. And the project will reduce the average, average age of present transit fleet from seven to five years. So I think Mayor Baker also spoke to that, right? It's a, it's a modernization as well uh, in terms of um, rejuvenating our fleet. But those are the numbers. Um, that is all of our questions. So I'd like to... Uh, Madam, uh, Madam, Madam MC, can I take a picture of everybody? Sure. Can everybody smile? Thank you. <laughs> and, and maybe just for like a small clarification, those are the new buses we're purchasing, but I have, uh, I have a note that has just been uh, tossed our way to indicate that we have 25 buses in our fleet currently. Thank you everyone. And it was my honor to be MC for this afternoon. And uh, we certainly appreciate everybody joining us. So uh, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank Happy you. Canada Day, everybody. Happy Canada Day.